Bonjour, and welcome to my video book review of Predictive Machines by R.J. Arwal and Avi Goldfa. The book Predictive Machines is an economist's point of view on the subject of artificial intelligence, and their point of view is pretty simple. They believe that prediction, or the act of taking information or data and using it to predict what's going to happen in the future or fill in missing information, upcoming, is going to be the biggest transformative change in business and life from the artificial intelligence revolution. And to support this, they use the analogy they call the Amazon experiment. In the Amazon experiment, they say, right now, Amazon is a business that waits for you to click or tell Alexa to order or any of their other various means of having you order stuff from their website. And they send it to you, and if you don't like it, you send it back. But Prediction will actually change the Amazon model, they think, because as prediction gets better, they will be able to better predict what items you want to order, and they'll be able to send you the items before you even order it. The only thing keeping them from doing this right now is that right now their prediction hit rate isn't high enough. Right now, I think it's like under 60%. The actual statistic is in the book, but they'd be getting back too many products that people don't actually want, and so it wouldn't be cost effective. But once prediction hits that tipping point, so to speak, where it's cheaper for them to send you a product before you order it, the entire business is going to change. And that is the effect of prediction. So with that in mind, let's move forward and talk about the structure of the book. The book is broken up into four parts. The first part is about prediction and how to improve it. Pretty interesting stuff. The second part is about judgment and prediction, or the human factor. This is where, if you're worried about how prediction or AI is going to take your jobs, you can breathe a little easier. And the third part is all about AI tools that are going to change things using prediction. The fourth part is about strategy. So overall, this book was a little hard to read, and I'm a pretty technical, AI-savvy reader. So if you're not super passionate about AI or prediction, this might not be the book for you. But let's get into my three takeaways so you can get all the value without having to read through the boring technical writing. Takeaway number one, small improvements in prediction actually lead to huge improvements in the overall business. So most people think that you need to make a big jump, like a 50% jump in prediction to see a real big improvement. But it's actually not true. And in the book, they give the example of a choice between an improvement from 98% to 99.9% or an improvement from 85% to 90%. And they want you to decide what you think is the better improvement. On the surface, 5% improvement is better than 1.9, right? It's more than double. But if you look at the rate of mistakes and how it falls, in the 5% improvement, mistakes drop by about a third, about 33%. In the 1.9% improvement, going from 98% to basically perfect, mistakes drop by 20 times. So you're getting, I don't know, something like a 60 times better improvement rate in making mistakes, a drop in mistakes, a 60 time decrease in being wrong in that 1.9% improvement versus only about a 33% improvement from in that 5% jump which is very fascinating. So you don't have to make giant improvements in order to have the benefits of prediction. Number two, most decisions are made in uncertainty and thus the value of models is always going to be debatable. Because decisions are made where we don't know what the costs are, right? We're not sure what happens if we make this decision. Models are only ever going to be so valuable, and predictive devices are only ever going to be so valuable. We're still going to need a human to decide whether or not it's actually worth it. And to use a quick poker analogy, poker, unlike business, allows you to really detailed calculate the costs of your mistake. If I have a pot in front of me of $1,500 and the guy's calling me and I'm not sure if he has a straight which would beat me or he's just bluffing, I can see that the negative consequences of this would be $1,500 plus the implied pot odds if we continue to go forward and, and have more betting opportunities. But I can do a calculation on that. In real life, we often can't do that calculation, right? We can calculate what the consequences are if we drive drunk, but we're not sure exactly what the odds are of us getting pulled over, and we can only calculate some of the consequences. We can't calculate, say, the consequences of hitting someone while driving drunk as opposed to just getting pulled over. So 
Because of the uncertainty of decision making, there will always be a limit to predictions value and a need for human judgment. And the third takeaway, this is to me the coolest part of the book, the biggest thing that's going to improve humanity's existence through AI is getting rid of what's called satisficing. So satisficing is an economic term, and it basically means good enough, close enough, right? In the book, they give two examples of satisficing. One is getting a biopsy because the medical imaging was inconclusive, so they have to actually like cut something off of you. Not fun. And the other is waiting in an airport lounge because you know they recommend you get to the airport two hours early. These are both satisficing solutions. They're good enough. You'll find out if the person has cancer, and you know you'll make your flight. But there's a little degree of suffering. You have to wait it out and be bored in the lounge, or you have to go under the knife. As prediction improves, as medical imaging improves, as they get better predictions for when you need to get to your airport based on traffic, waiting times, etc., we're going to stop satisficing, which means all those times that things are, you know, good enough are going to just become good. And that's going to be a big improvement in the quality of life. I, for one, am very excited to get to the airport 40 minutes early as opposed to 90 minutes early. That's going to wrap up my review of Predictive Machines. Overall, I'd give it about a 3 out of 5 stars. It's kind of a boring read, but there is some good information in there, and there's definitely some interesting nuggets. So check out Predictive Machines if you're interested in prediction, and I will have a new review for you very soon.